All right, everyone, um, just double checking uh, with the audio here. Make sure that the, everything is cool. Um, one, two, one, two. Not quite sure that we do have audio. Uh, um, no, actually, we do have um, audio. We just a little bit low on the volume here. Perfect. I think it's a little bit better now. All right. I'm uh, just going to turn off the monitor because uh, it kind of annoys me to hear myself. Everyone, uh, welcome to tonight's stream. Uh, I hope you're well. Um, it, sorry about yesterday i figure we probably we're gonna be uh having a little bit less attendant today because of the uh issues yesterday uh, i apologize about that there um just gonna just a little volume a little bit here um essentially uh i i changed computer and um I was um, I was having uh, I didn't realize I didn't have OBS set up or anything uh, all my scenes and everything so um, that took a couple of uh, a couple of time uh, to get set up on the on this new computer here now uh, I'm still uh, going to upgrade this new computer but uh, for now uh, it should be doing the uh, the work because the other one uh, was on uh, with the 16 gig of RAM. Um, and this one also has 16 gig of RAM, but uh, a lot better CPU and GPU. So uh, it should help me perform better here. Now, I do have something new with this stream um, because uh, I wasn't sure how uh, the system would be performing with your OBS and the virtual machine, uh, Kali virtual machine and everything. Uh, so we're going to twist things up a little bit. So I'm going to be using pawn box today um, So that's a little twister. I'll explain a little bit how to get set up. Maybe we can uh, Go ahead and do that right now um, Perfect So let me just um I usually run under Linux and uh, I'm just getting used, well, I mean, I still know how to drive a Windows machine, but uh, I'm still getting used to this new Windows setup here, so uh, yeah, if you bear with me. Um, all right, so we have this, um, essentially we have this, uh, this system here um, that we're going to access through um, so we click on connect is how we we I'm just searching for my words here. I apologize. Um, so essentially, we're going to click on connect to HTB and then we click on machine. Uh, then instead of going to VPN and downloading that VPN file here, um, we're going to actually go ahead and click on pawn box now. Um, there's a lot of options here depending on where you are in the world. Um, that's actually a Canadian one. I didn't realize there was. Um, and then you choose your rank. Uh, VIP plus tend to be populated. Uh, so I drop myself to another level. So I, we just click on that. Then it thinks for a little bit. And then we just click on Star and Pawn Box, and it's as easy as that. Within a couple of seconds, you basically have a full Linux distro at the palm of your hand, all sitting in your browser um, with all the tools installed and everything, or most of the tools, I should say, because there's going to be a, a tool or two that we need to install today for today's stream. Um, but other than that, it's pretty fast uh, the UI is pretty responsive as well so we're just gonna wait until this spawns up and once it does um, I'll have to go get this uh, this box started 
as well. So today we're going to be doing up down. Um, going to come back to our VPN box here so it's still setting things up uh, the same time uh, we're bringing the up down box um, so I apologize usually I do this up front but I wanted to show you guys how easy it was to spawn the um, the pawn box machine and get going with that Um, so you have uh, my data folder basically that has a couple of files that you can um, move as you uh, access or act these boxes. Um, so once that's open, you click on open desktop and it basically opens this little um, Linux environment here. So our box is started and we can basically get going. So before we get our hands dirty with some hacking, just wanted to say that this box is quite some fun. Uh, I went through different rabbit holes, uh, but everything about this box is, I think, within my skill set. Um, so that's why I enjoyed it. Now, um, the foothold, to get foothold is a little bit tricky, but after that, uh, after that obstacle, uh, everything is pretty much straightforward. Um, although it's a medium box, I do find that the privilege escalation to get the root is pretty easy. Um, but I understand. I mean, you can't... Um, if you want to keep things different, sometimes you, there's a couple of boxes going to get mixed up. I apologize. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, there's a special editor trick that I want to mention as well uh, that I see once in a while in the wild. Uh, sometimes people will have like a web application firewall, WAF, and they need a way to bypass it for whatever reason. I find, uh, sometimes I find it that it's for vulnerability assessment. They want to make sure their site is still um, good. And if they keep the site behind the WAF, basically, is that um, they're not ab allowed to test the, the website fully. Um, so they, they had this uh, this editor and um, with like a password in it, and uh, this actually yeah allows you to get to the the um, that other box. I apologize. I'm just gonna take a slug of coffee here. Um, Maybe I should have done that before starting the stream. Um, and then uh, once you get past that, um, in Linux, there, there's a set uh, UID, a set GUID, that's a common way for administrators to allow programs to run in specific users. Again, for whatever reason, uh, sometimes it's true automation or whatever. So let's dive in. I mean, the skills required to do the box, uh, I would say... Um, HTTP request skills because you need to be uh, playing with uh, burp, um, burp or zap, whatever. Uh, I would say uh, some PHP knowledge really make uh, knowing PHP makes re things really easy here. Um, a little bit of Python knowledge, more specifically Python 2, because um, it allows us to move literally to get the user flag later on. Um, understanding Linux and the set UID permission, uh, like Py like Python, this is needed to um, to move literally later on. Uh, the tools we're going to be using, just a simple hand map. I mean, uh, you should be having your go-to hand map commands by now. If you don't, you should consider having some. Just throwing a, a text file and a couple of commands in there with the, the most common scans that you run and um, essentially, it's a lot easier when it comes to doing scan than remembering all these commands in long. Oh man, I'm sorry. <laughs> it seems I haven't had enough sleep last night. Uh, so when typing these long commands and whatnot, so it's a lot easier um, when you just go and um, 
copy paste. Uh, we're going to be using Ferox Buster. Uh, Ferox Buster, because, um, well, the fuzzer you use, I don't think it's important, but we're going to find out here that the word list you pick is really important. Now, uh, we're going to be using burp this time, but it can be burp or zap, whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat, basically. Um, we have, uh, we're going to be using foxy proxy but that's optional it just makes it easier to switch on and off the proxy later on um, so to start the enumeration of our target we're just going to start the uh, good old trusted end map uh, I usually do uh, minus a minus t4 uh, and I like to have all the ports so p uh, minus p minus and then I'll just do the 10, 10, 11, 175, uh, 177. And, uh, but I already have that ran here. So um, here's that, that folder to my data. And um, I do have uh, this data right here. So essentially we see that we only have the uh, the web server and the NSSH server. Um, so title of the website is my website up. I mean, uh, since web pages tend to be developed by just about anyone these days, um, I would say most of the time they're weak. They're the weakest link. So let's start with that. Um, we know we have the index page, but let's start with the Ferox bust, uh, Ferox Buster here, and uh, just gonna throw that at the system and see what pages come up. And ah, uh, yeah. So Ferox Buster is not installed on the box. So sudo apt update sudo apt install. I apologize. I should have. I could use GoBuster. I just like the. Um, I just like the. Um, the colored output of uh, Ferox Buster. Uh, I find it it's easier to see on stream there for you guys. Um, so run that again. Did I run it without the, uh, C403, all right, there it goes, it just didn't like that I resized the window, it just, sometimes end curse can be fussy, so, so that again, I mean, I've already did that for you, but, um, but it comes out pretty quickly, the result here. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be using the big file, but oh well. Um, I thought, at first I thought using the big file was the, was a good way because it would get me all these, all these results and whatnot. But you'll see later on uh, when you see that the, uh, the fuzzer you use is not that important, although the uh, wordless it is. So... While that's running, let's just open up Firefox and take a look at the web page here. So we're going to throw 10, 10, oh, 10, 10, 11, 177. And we get to this page right here eventually. All right, so it's is my website up essentially? So it's a simple website to check. Like if we type in http slash slash google dot com, um, and I mean I will check debug. Why not? Why not? Right, we have the option, so might as well do it. And we click on check, and essentially that will come back and say that Google's not up because this box doesn't have access to the internet, right? But if we do HTTP, let's say, colon, colon, localhost, and we enable the debug just to look what it's doing, and it says that a website is up, because it really is, right? And then we can see all the code that 
that we see on this web page, right? All the HTML code that generates this web page. Now, if we go back to our Ferox Buster, it found another site here. And it turned out that was the, the it's the only site that it will ever find, so I'll cancel it out. Um, and once we put that site in here, um, we basically get this page, like a blank page. And if we view the search code, like there's nothing, like it's not, there's nothing at all. So that's kind of weird, right? That's kind of strange. Now, also, there's one thing I wanted wanted to note from here is that. If we look at the source code over here at uh, this page is that it's very vulnerable to cross-site scripting and HTML code injection because basically what it does is, is it throws this HTML page just between text area bracket, right? That's all it does. It adds the, it adds the header, like the response header, and we get the doc type and we get all that stuff. So, I mean, we could essentially do cross-site scripting here. And it is it is uh, vulnerable to cross-site scripting, but um, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain later on. So now we have find this web page, and so perhaps there's another way. There's something else we're missing. So maybe we can do file and slash slash, and let's do uh, password file oh hacking attempt was detected so it sure didn't like that right uh, so this is basically where i went back to the text area started doing some all kind of uh, xss um and i mean it, it's it it is exploitable but i was not able to get it to display any web of the web page uh, or the the web servers local content because xss runs on the browser right so it's not like it's not pulling any files from the server if it's pulling any files locally it would be the files from the user way browsing the web page which is my browser right so it's, that's worthless now after some time troubleshooting and trying to find a way through my XSS madness, I started to think about this and it kind of hit me. Like, the fuzzing software you use, it will only tell you if something present, and it does that to its best ability, but with the data you provided. That being said, the folder that I was looking for was not included in the big word list that I used for my fuzzer. So after more research, I figured out that there was some other uh, lists here that I could use. And it's a very popular list too. It's already included, turns out it's already on the box. So it's from sec lists. Uh, you go discovery and uh, web content and you use the ref medium word and I went lowercase just because it probably has less things right and I launched that and right away I mean it got to the dev a lot quicker and in just a moment, it will find a very, very, very important directory that if it wouldn't be of that, I mean, we we would have been searching because there's nothing else on this website. Like, basically, we will see the code later on and we even see this dev web page that it's, it hasn't been developed yet. So, maybe it'll take a little bit of time, but and while it does that, I'll 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 download the tool. Maybe you'll 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 get the clue what the what the issue is. Uh, so we're gonna be using a tool that's called Git Dumper. So we just do uh, 
git clone here on and it's a tool that i found it basically downloads all the repo because we want to download all the repo essentially there's a dot git folder that's hidden in this dev folder that we don't see and if we run this program here python and we go to the git dumper and we run git dumper right this program right here and it needs a url all right we have the url see in the dot git folder it just found it right so the dot git folder and since it found it we're just going to create we're just stopping it and we're going to create the code folder here and we're going to give it git code and here it's going to fetch all the code from the server like all these files basically and it downloads it to the code so here we have all the change logs right so the beta version they checked a bunch of website then they have to do the multi-threading they have to remove the upload option we didn't see no upload option and there's a new admin panel which is probably what we were seeing earlier let's take a look so if we hit the index page and this is where the first thing is a little bit interesting because here it seems like this get parameter is like it just doesn't include it's probably vulnerable to uh and and there's a path to do it but i'm not going to show it this way because it's not the intended way of doing the box uh, i'm gonna focus to the intended way here um and essentially here when we click the admin panel all it does is just just brings us back to that okay sure enough now if we look at the admin page this is what i was telling you like it just there's nothing right it, there's no code being output so when we visit the admin page there's there's nothing being shown and that's when we click the admin link actually it's not when we go to the dev site the dev site is something else we'll see it later i apologize and then if we check the checker that's basically the page we see when we browse the website so we can see it's doing a whole lot of things so the first thing we should be looking at is the index page where i mean we'll be coming back to this later on but it definitely there's a problem an injection issue here um like we can get um an lfi from this here so a local uh, file inclusion and if we look into here it seems like this is a better version it's talking about a better version that's that's not the uh, that's not the one we have access it, it to right it's that's not the better like it doesn't say better um, and this one actually has the file upload right all right so i wonder if there's a, any other thing so a thing that 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 we're able to do is with git it pulls all the different changes the dot git as not only the current code but it has like all the changes you did and all the previous code as all the all of that backlog so if we do git log here we basically get get shown like all these changes that were done in the past and there's something that's very interesting here we deleted an ht password on this commit so let's let's go to the the previous one so to do that we do git checkout and then we paste the hash 
and then if we look it up there's less code and we should have our ht password which we do right but there's, there's nothing in here and then once we look we see there's also an ht access and we could have known that if we went back into our git log and just scroll a little bit lower and we see it they created the ht access and everything so but let's see what's in this ht access file so this is very very interesting so it's only available to us if there's the um, that special letter, right? And also here, that's when they did that last change. They say there's a new technique in the editor to protect our dev VOs. I mean, we can go and we could go and basically fuzz all the VOs, but chances are, I mean, we're just going to guess that it could be um, just dev, right? And we already have the website name right here. It's site up uh, site up site is up .htb. So let's just add this to our uh, OS file real quick. So 10, 10, 11, 177, and site is up.htb, and we're going to go dev site is up.htb, right? And if we go to dev.site is up.htb, we get to this all right well we may know why right because it says here in the code we need to have this special dev access okay this is where uh burp is going to come handy so we're going to turn burp on and we're going to launch the burp suite i'm going to take a slug of coffee apologize right and we're going to leave intercept on and let's refresh this page here so we see if we go back to burp and we add this special dev So we copy this here and we paste this in here. We'll make sure it kind of looks like a header, right? And let's forward this. And we can see this, right? It kind of looks broken and everything. I mean, we can do this. We could add it every time, but we're going to make things permanent here. So we're going to go to option. Uh, we're just going to scroll down here, match and replace. We're going to add this. Um, so basically, we'll just paste this thing again. Um, and it's uh, it's just a dev editor, right? And you leave the rest all default. Make sure that it's checked. And once you get back in here, you can go basically back to uh, intercept, turn the intercept off because we don't need it no more. And if you refresh the page, you can see, well, now we get the full thing. And we get the, this upload button, right? So if we go back to the code and look at the index... Right? So we can add page equals let's see password, 
right? But that doesn't work. So if we do index, well, that's gonna that's gonna break because it kind of goes into a loop. And if we do admin, it's just just gonna tell us that the page cannot. So we do checker, you get it right. Basically, the code takes whatever we give it into page, add each dot uh, PHP to it, and includes that in the page. And then it just adds only for developer, and it basically we just see the same page. Perfect. Now, something else we could do here is if we go to tar or in the proxy HTTP history, we can see where we did this request here and we send it to the repeater. Like there's different. Um, if we Google. Um, Um, PHP filter base 64 encode basically and we get to just this PHP filter right and we just we can just paste that instead and we send this and sure enough it, it returns the index page that's basically the that's the index page right is it not it is it is so we're able to like we could put in admin it's still gonna do the same thing right there's not a whole lot of code page is empty for now and it is so we're actually able to run some stuff in here but let's keep that in the back of our minds because right now it's not that important and um well, it is important, but we're not able to use it as as good as we're going to be using it. Let, let's take a look at this new upload fu function we, got, we have access to, right? So if we take a look at the checker file. Oh, so I'm, I'm not to the current, so I just need to go take the ash and get we're just gonna check out and take the the ash of the first file right so we're going to come back in time Yeah, that's the one. Why well, didn't do it? All right, well, I'm pretty certain normally I would have access to it, but uh, for I just don't want to be doing uh, troubleshooting this. So I'm just going to create the folder again um, and just pulling it. Like this. And... I don't understand uh, while I was doing the uh, the write up. I just I was just able to get back to it. I, whatever. Sometimes Git is a uh, is a weird mystery, and I'm not claiming to be a, a professional Git Git expert or whatnot. Um, all right, so we got the checker file. So if we take a look at it. 
might want to make it a little bit bigger. Um, so this is basically where the post is happening. So the first thing it does is it checks whether these extensions are, are there. So we're not able to upload any PHP, HTML, Python, Perl, zip files, or R, you name it, right? We're not able to do that. Then what it does is it creates this directory with the, uh, with the MDA5 hash of the time. And it uploads the files over there. Once it's done uploading the file, it reads it and it deletes it. Right? All right. So we're not able to upload a PHP file. Uh, we're not able to, and the, we do have a problem in the index file where uh, we have file inclusion. And we're able to run command through filters. Now, the thing, the thing is here is that Perhaps there's an, another way, and sure, sure enough, there is. Um, now, one of these filters is actually FAR, which which handles a PHP FAR file, and it's just a simple zip PHP code. It's all it is. It's a it's a PHP file within a zip, and because of that. Zip doesn't really care what extension it has because all it cares about is that magic that magic number, that magic byte at the beginning of the file, right? So that being said, we can create a par file that has any extension we want. Uh, doesn't have to be one of the ones that's banned. That includes that PHP. And let's test it out, all right? So... I'm going to write a, a page, so let's write psycho.php. And that file can be can be PHP because the, it's sitting inside a zip. So we're going to zip psycho.php, and we're going to zip that to psycho.txt. Or I did it backward there. So... We're going to zip psycho.php into psycho.zip. All right, so let's go back to the website. We have the psycho.txt. We upload that. Site seems to be up. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is that it also, in the code here, it uploads that file to an upload. It sends that file to an upload folder, right? So perhaps we're able to view that folder and now I'll probably be too late. No, it, there it is. And if we look, we see this file here. So now instead of using the other filter we used earlier, here if we use far, let's try that. So far is the filter for far is simply just far, and then we want the upload folder. We want this. The file is psycho.txt, and within the psycho.txt we got the psycho.php. But remember, it appends that PHP automatically, so we don't have to add it. So if we send that. Uh, I think we we were late. Um, no, the file's still there.
but it should say cycle somewhere in here. Uh, Oh, okay. I'm viewing the wrong. It's f site uploads, not upload. And if we check back in here. Now I'm probably late. Yeah. So let's try that again. See, there's no file. Uh, there's no file in here. So if we browse psycho.txt and then we check that, we refresh this folder. There's a full now there's this folder. We can go in here, take it in here, paste that here, then send. Oh. Did Um, I'm not seeing the psycho at all. Wait, so upload um, this file, psycho.txt, then psycho.php. Oh, something's not working correctly. Uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah. That's why. Because this is on the same page. I screwed up my request. So now it's definitely not there no more. I'm just going to go to parent directory, refresh. It's there. Uh, BFA. Psycho, psycho.ca, we got the special letter, it's a link that site. Let's do that again, all right? So, upload, psycho.txt, send it should have two folders this folder see there it is perfect so I don't know what I, I did I think I had an extra character in the other thing there um, so there we get the psycho so we're able to execute PHP code, right? Now, we should be able to get this to execute like more robust code. So, let's try to do this here. Um, we'll do system who am I, right? And we want to echo that stuff because we want to see what's like we're going to remove the psycho.txt file because that's the old zip. We're going to rezip it and browse to back to the upload folder. We're going to send the new, uh, the new zip file, psycho.txt. We send it. And once we refresh, we see the new folder. We get 
the name of the folder we paste that in burp send the request oh i think the <laughs> i think it got erased on us yeah they sure did all right let's try that again i knew as i was doing it because the uh, the two other folders were not gone yet right so psycho.txt we send it we check the uh, uploads folder we got this new hash copy that into burp we send the request oh we got system error oh i wonder what it's i mean our php doesn't have any error right And this is where uh, knowing PHP a little bit can help. Uh, so let's just run PHP info. <coughs> um, I apologize. And we remove the old zip file. We rezip it. And then Let's send it to the full to the web server. Check. Refresh. File is there. And now I'm gonna take this here and I'm gonna put it into here because well, I want to see what the PHP info looks like, right? Otherwise, it's just going to be text and garbage, and it's going to be hard to read. Now, if we take a look at this page here, it shows you all the setup. So we know it's PHP 8.0, uh, which is probably a secure version or a good version of PHP. Um... However, we see all these disabled functions. So, and we got exec, ear, shell exec, exec, system. So that's why all these, all these commands are not available. Like, that's why I throw in a system error because it can't run that. Now, from here, what we want to know is, is there any dangerous function left on the system that can we can leverage to get code execution right so i did that I, I google for a list of dangerous and um list of dangerous php function and if we bring that in here essentially i brought brought me to this page here and i just went through the list searching for every single one of them okay so is exec in here yes it is is pass through pass through is okay um system was shell exec we seen it p open p open his and proc open and this is where i said well maybe we got something here right so we don't have proc open so how can we get an rc to proc open and basically the p i'm not going to go through that because it's basically a whole lot of documentation that i got from the php website it does a pretty good job at explaining it but essentially i got uh f from that documentation i was able to create this um this code here so i'm just going to remove the the old psycho.php the psycho.txt and i'm gonna copy the psycho.php file and I'll show you 
what it looks like. So essentially, um, if you take a look at the the, um, the documentation, it tells you to do uh, like the description, the pipe description, and then the command. And on there, it tells you to use a file for the log for the errors. I just use back the you can you can just shoot it to stdr so i just use uh, the the pipe to stdr basically um and the command i want to run is this but the ip changed since last time so if i go in here and it's 14.2 right so we need to zip this psycho.php to psycho.txt and we want to open the netcat listener port 1234 now once we once we upload that file we should we should be able to, uh, let's see, psycho.txt, we want to check it, parent directory, because obviously all the files have been deleted by now, we're going to copy this, bring it to our burp, because that's the easiest way to send it. Did I forget? No. Okay. So we, we did get a shell. Now. So this is basically all the website that's sitting in here. Um, with the upload folder. Right. And if we go to ohm. Uh, we see there's only one folder in here. So we got the developer. And there's the user file, but we can't we can't access it because basically only root and the group developer can access it. Okay, but there's also a dev folder, so let's check what's in the dev folder. And in the dev folder, we see this here. And if we take a look, we have access to those files, and one of them is pretty interesting. It has an S here instead of a X. So that means it has set UID. So when we run that file, it runs as developer. Now we do have access to the binary or non-binary version of it, I think. And the uh, site is up underscore test.python. I think the other one has been compiled from Python. Now, this is uh, here. I'm no Python expert, and it took me a couple of minutes to, or a bit of time to actually realize. But the the vulnerability here lies in right plain sight, because well, we can see that it does print space. And then uh, code website is up. If it would done have done print parentheses, print that would have meant it's Python tree. But because it's using those just a space, essentially that means it's Python two. Now that's what makes it interesting because in Python two the input command is actually vulnerable so i'm not going to go into the details but i found a page on um, geek for shield uh, ge uh, geek for geeks and basically it explains the vulnerability it's in it's in my wa uh, walk through uh, my write-up there make sure to to check it out it's very it explains in detail um why with python 2 you should be using raw input instead of raw uh, but for us, I mean, right now it's perfect because we it might need it might means that we're able to to execute code, right? So if we do this Python two, 
and then site is up test dot python it basically asks us this right it wants us to input the url so what if we try to import os and then what we want to do is we want to run system from that and say who am I? And press enter. And it turns out a bunch of errors, but what's interesting is just at the beginning, it did tell us who, who we were. Right? So if we try that same command with site is up, right and we import os umi we should get a different output because of set uid and we do we said it says developer right so let's try this again but instead let's run bash because why wouldn't we right Yeah, but well, before we do that, we actually need to run the um, site is up, right? And then we can paste that command with bash. My bad. And now if I do who am I, I'm developer, right? So... If I go back to the home folder, I should be able to cat the user file again. No, I can't. Why? Because the access requires me to have the group. And because of the way of the set UID, and it, it wasn't set GUID, I only got the developer user, but never got the actual group from, that came with it. But... When we did ls minus la earlier, I noticed a dot ssh folder. And usually dot ssh would have an id rsa, which we would have access to. Now this simplifies the things a little bit because we can just copy things like that. Exit right out of here. Create our copy the IDRSA locally. Change mod 600 on it. And then SSH minus A IDRSA developer 10, 10, 11, 177. <coughs> and bang. We get the user. And I'm not going to cat it this time because I, I want to keep, I want to, I don't want to guys to copy ping, pasting it. But this is how you get the user. So you basically get the user. Now, normally I would take a break, but it's been an hour since I've been talking. And the root privilege uh, escalation, it's pretty, pretty easy. Now, the first thing I would do once I get the user flag the, the very first thing i do is usually sudo minus l and look at that easy install perhaps it could be just so we go to gtfo bins and we go on here and we check for easy install for sudo and sure enough like it gives us the actual command, we just need to copy and paste. And we're root. Like, who am I? I'm the god on this box. Look at me. I'm the captain. Right? And we got the root flag. <laughs> so it was pretty simple, pretty easy. Essentially what this command does is that it creates 
an easy install package that just create the shell. And once you install that package, it gives you root access. So, like I said, the privilege escalation was a little bit easy, but I did we did spend quite a time, quite some time to get a full hold into the system. I would say that, however, that the system, uh, the overall experience was fun, enjoyable. Um, never, it was never really a matter of hitting a brick wall. Like it was just more of doing a little bit more, uh, hitting some small obstacles, and basically doing a little bit more research. Um, and this is it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough. Um, let me uh, let me just go full screen here and take that away from my face a little bit. Well, I hope you did enjoy the walkthrough. Um, so I. I I know we when I, I do these streams late, uh, it happened once or twice already uh, since I've been doing them, that I get less people. Uh, people are accustomed to be joining on the last... Um, I usually do the streams on the last Saturday of the month, um, depending on my availability and whatnot. And um, well, next stream is basically the last Saturday of February, so on the 25th, we'll be doing uh, the box ambassador. So, I hope you guys will be joining us. Um, we'll be doing it a little bit like this here. Uh, I might be doing it if you guys liked it on the uh, on the pawn box, I might do it again on the pawn box. I I kind of enjoyed it. Um, I don't, it doesn't leave my system with all kind of garbage that you do this CTF in. And, um, well, this is it for me. Um, I hope you enjoyed the, the stream, tonight's stream, and uh, I hope you have a good night. You have a good night. Bye-bye.